What's happening, people? This is Matt from Bastone Guitars. Um, do something a little bit different today. Uh, more of a conversation thing. I guess I do a lot of that more so than, than playing for you. Uh, really, this is just a nice looking prop. This is going to get its own video here soon, but I need something to hide my belly behind. And uh, it's kind of pertinent to what I'm going to talk about because of how I ended up acquiring it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about ethics, more or less, and just kind of uh, a handful of things to keep in mind if you're going to buy and sell equipment. And uh, honestly, this kind of works for almost anything you might want to do resale-wise, flipping things, uh, buying low, selling high kind of thing. Um, you know, that can rub people the wrong way. And honestly, it shouldn't if you're honest and if you, uh, you know, do keep a few things in mind ethically. And uh, most of it's really common sense, and unfortunately, a lot of people kind of, you know, they know what they're doing. They're not mistakenly doing these things. They're, they're you know, usually it's intentional when people are, are trying to take you for a ride. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, because I've been, in the last year or so, I've been buying and selling guitars, pedals, all kinds of things like that. And I've made it a point to not... You know, I, I've tried to pass along good deals to people when I can. I also, though, try to get the most money I can out of most of the things I sell, unless it's to, like, a personal acquaintance or something, in which case, you know, there's always a buddy price. Um, I'm going to uh, be referencing my analog um, teleprompter here once in a while. Um, and I really didn't, like, number these. I didn't make a list. This isn't a tier. This isn't a, you know, you know me, I have to... Avoid anything trendy that might make me popular at all costs, and so I'm not doing that. So anyway, um, just in no particular order, uh, when the price is right on an item, don't get greedy. If you know somebody is asking well below what something is worth, you don't have to take it upon yourself to be a hero and say, oh, dude, you know, you're asking 100 bucks, but you should be able to get 150 so I'm going to pay more. You know, don't insist on paying more. But if somebody's asking 100 bucks for something and you know it's worth 200 bucks, it's probably not a good time to say, hey, will you take 80? Um, you, you know, you can, but you're going to rub some people the wrong way. Um, so, you know, when the price is good, sometimes it's a good idea to just pay what somebody's asking. And then you don't have to feel bad for paying a low price because you're also not trying to get a better price yet. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of an obvious thing, but uh, a lot of people... They just assume every price is negotiable. So when they put something up and they see you're asking 100 bucks, they think they can get it for 80. Uh, there's also nothing wrong with trying to get a lower price on something because you want to resell it. Um, I make it a point to where I tell people a lot of times, I don't actually ask, hey, would you take this price for something? A lot of times what I'm going to do, if something is for sale and it's a reasonable price, you know, say you have an item, we're going to just keep falling back on something that's worth a hundred bucks and they're asking about a hundred bucks and it's been for sale for two weeks, three weeks, keep seeing it on marketplace or Craigslist. That's a case where I might, I don't send a message and say, Hey, will you take 70 bucks? What I do is I send them a message and say, you have a good price. That's a good item. I'm interested in it, but I'm only buying if I can get it for seventy dollars say or eighty dollars whatever the price is but uh you know basically tell them um you know the way i like to phrase it is i'll say if nobody else you know if you decide you would like seventy dollars for this item contact me I don't just say will you take this i just tell them here's a standing offer at a certain amount if you get tired of waiting for somebody who wants to pay what it's worth i would be happy to take it off your hands for x amount um, and a lot of times if somebody asks me, I'll tell them, yeah, I'm likely going to post it for sale, but I'll usually tell them I'm going to put this on eBay, something like that. And I usually do that when I buy local, I usually sell national. Um, you know, a lot of people don't want to see you buy their guitar from them and then see it right back on Craigslist for a hundred dollars more the next day. Um, they, they really, once it's your guitar, they don't have a whole lot to complain about, but, but you know, it, it can, it, it matters how people perceive what you're doing. And a lot of times I buy something and I'll let people, you know, if they ask me about it, you know, or they start telling me about the use and we get into talking gear, a lot of times, you know, you don't have to volunteer any more information than what's asked of you, but I'll tell people, you know, I'm going to try this thing out 
and if it's not for me, I'm going to resell it. And, and you know, and I'm going to get as much as I can for it because I'm patient. And so then really, if, you, if you've been up front like that, people shouldn't really be upset with you. As long as, you know, if what I don't care for is when somebody tries to get a good price out of you and they're telling you how, oh, you know, I've always wanted one of these, you know, just all, oh, but all I can afford is this, but I really would like this. And then they turn around and flip it very quickly. And it becomes very apparent that the, the sob story about how they wanted this thing so bad and they can only afford so much, it's, it was motivated by profit. And there's nothing wrong with being motivated by profit as long as you're honest about it. So, you know, don't lie and say, this is for me and it's the, you know, the distortion pedal of my dreams. I've always had to have one of these and now I can finally have one. And a day later, it's back up on for sale for a much higher price. Um, another thing is don't be insulting if you're going to make a lower offer on things. Uh, you know, one of the worst things is you get a message where somebody tries to convince you that what you're asking for something is too high, you know, and it's, it, or say, I can get these for this much all day long, you know. Uh, my brother sold an amp where somebody did that, tried to tell him, oh, I'll give you this much for it, I can buy these all day long at this price. And he's like, well, then why don't you? Why do you want this one that's listed higher? Go buy those ones that are listed lower. And it's because those things don't exist. It's a really sleazy kind of buyer's way of trying to convince somebody that what they have isn't worth what they want. Don't devalue the item to get a better price. It's, it's usually best to acknowledge what something is worth. Even tell, you know, sometimes you can say, hey, yeah, this is on the higher side of what you're asking, but it's reasonable. Or, yeah, that's a good price, but, you know, I... I I'd be more comfortable at this price. There's just, there's so many tactful ways to negotiate a price without insulting the person who you're trying to do business with. Because who wants to do, I mean, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Nobody wants to give their money to somebody who is treating them with disrespect. Um, another one, this is really obvious. Don't be a no-show, don't be late. If you make an arrangement to deal, if you say, hey, are you around Saturday to do this or that? Be there if you say you're going to be there and be there at the time that you agree on. That's, that is the number one thing. I mean, yeah, maybe you got busy, but guess what? Everybody's busy. I, I notice a real tendency. It seems like the busier people are, the less busy they assume everybody else is. Like everybody else has got time to burn but them. The fact of the matter is nobody's got time to burn. Everybody's time is valuable. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter whether you have a family or not, if you're a single guy who has a super easy job and everything else, your time is still valuable. Nobody should waste it. So be prompt. Show up when you say you're going to show up. Make arrangements and stand by them. Don't say you're coming to do something and then, oh, I just decided to, you know, you'll be here when I feel like it. That's just not how it works. Um, I, I will stop returning calls when people do that, especially as a seller. Is if you want to sell your item and people are trying to make arrangements to come see it or purchase it, make yourself as available as you can. If you don't, I mean, you don't owe it to anybody, but do you want to make a sale or not? That's kind of the question you got to keep asking yourself. If you're selling, make it easy for the buyer. If you're buying and you want a good deal and you want to be treated well and not have an awkward situation, do the same. Show up when you say you're going to show up. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't make offers that you don't stand by or that you don't intend to fulfill. If you tell somebody, I'll give you this much for that, you should expect that if they accept, you can't change your mind at that point. I mean, you can if you see it in person. That's another thing. Uh, don't ever forget that you can walk away when the deal isn't good. If you get there and you see something in person, it doesn't look like it did in the pictures, you can walk away. And if you're a seller, remind yourself that it's okay if they do that same thing. If they come and see your guitar and they're not in love with it once they see it in person, you don't want that person to buy that guitar because you're going to get calls later when they find anything they dislike about it. They're going to start to feel like they were had and you don't want to be the You want to sell a guitar to somebody who wants that guitar and who's going to love it because that person is going to tell somebody else, yeah, buy from that guy. He's a, he's an okay dude. Um, where else? Answer texts and emails promptly. That kind of goes with the other thing of respecting people's time. But more so than that, read any questions anyone sends you in detail and answer all of them. If somebody says, what year was this made? What country was it made in? And how long have you had it? Don't answer one of those questions. Because now you're going to have an email with the questions you missed. 
And then you're going to keep doing that. And I've had to ask somebody, you know, several emails in a row, keep asking the same questions that were all in the first email because they aren't answering them. Pay attention to what people are asking and answer in detail. Answer all of their questions to the best of your knowledge. And if you don't know the answer, mention that other question and why you didn't answer it is because you just simply don't know or you don't have the information, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, but you're going to waste your own time and their time if they have to keep asking the same questions over and over again. Man, I'm getting a tone. What happened here? I'm such a happy person usually. Now I'm getting all aggravated here. Whew. Let's, uh, let's bring it down a notch. You should uh, play some soothing music. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. So, oh, I guess the last thing I would probably really say is if somebody, uh, you know, if you're, if you're making a deal with somebody and it comes out in any way, shape, or form or they imply to you that, you know, you know, if I sell this to you for this price, I better not see it on Craigslist again here or I better, you know, you better not flip it on me or something. Those are the people you want to know you're flipping because they're the ones who will get angry about it. Um, and in that case, what the best thing you can tell somebody is, you know, I am trying to buy it low and I will probably try to resell it. You are completely free to wait until somebody else wants to pay the price that I'm going to ask for it or to learn about shipping guitars and get an eBay account and build up a reputation and try to sell it nationally because that's how you'll get them. You, know, you get a bigger audience that way. I've put things up for sale on Craigslist marketplace that, you know, get no traction at all. And you put it on eBay and there's bids in a day. So, I mean, you're expanding the number of people who might buy it by a huge margin. And uh, so I've had really good luck selling stuff on eBay. And also then it's not quite so apparent that, you know, you're not buying something and then posting it for sale again in the same market a day later. You know, you can flip things on a national level and that makes a lot more sense as far as, you know, somebody can't really hold that against you because if they want to put it up on a national market, they're going to get more money. And it's totally up to that person. Do you want a quick buck today or do you want to wait on it and do some work and ship it out? And, you know, and that comes with its own pitfalls too. You get people who have the most... Of, obnoxious things to get upset about on, on a national thing and you know you, you sell something on eBay you'll, you'll get people who will just decide after the fact no matter how perfect everything is that they just don't want to be happy and they may you know take a shot at you on, on eBay and that's a hard thing to swallow too it's really 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 obnoxious to have somebody point a finger at you when you have done nothing wrong uh, it's not something that's happened to me often but it's happened only has to happen once and you start to, oh, it just makes you say, why do I do this? Why do I sell these things? It's for that big double digit profit margin that I make on most of this stuff. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's what I can think of more or less off the top of my head and off a sheet of paper and a notebook. But uh, anyway, just a little sneak preview and a little talk about the next videos. I kind of felt like I needed to get something out here because I keep getting new subscribers. I have no idea why if people keep subscribing and I need to put something out. So that's what I'm doing here. But this is my acoustic electric uh, Fender. I believe it's a Fender Kingsman that I got from a friend of mine that he got really, really cheap on Craigslist. And then he ended up giving it to me in exchange for some work at his house. So I ended up with this really killer... <laughs> Really nice acoustic electric bass with the cool Fender's neck on it and I put some flats on it it sounds fantastic I love it so I'll do a video talking about this bass a little here soon and uh, another one that I have here that we're gonna be talking about soon I just picked up this killer 2003 Mexican jazz bass and sage green metallic I absolutely love this thing but it's got dead strings. There's no downward pretension at the nut because they didn't put any windings on there and this bridge rattles, but I've got a bridge for it. I got strings on the way. We're gonna do a full setup on it and you're gonna hear how freaking killer this thing is because this is a great jazz bass. I got this in a trade, cost me nothing. The other guy got probably a better deal. We'll talk about that a little bit too. It's okay not to be the guy who gets the, uh, the big money score every time. It's more important that you end up with what you want to play and this makes me want to play a lot. I love this thing. So, 
And uh, the other reason that the videos have been slow lately is I just recently got an interface and I'm starting to work with recording in Reaper. I promise I'm not going to start screaming and yelling like that guy on that other channel that I actually kind of enjoy his videos, but man, does he yell a lot. So I'm going to try not to yell and scream at you. But what I'm hoping to do is to get uh, set up here with my laptop soon to where I can do these videos and have the audio separate. And I want to start giving you guys audio that is a direct recording through Reaper because my wife's drum set rattling in the corner and all my fishing reels and everything else in the world in the way I thought it would be, uh, you know, instead of using the microphone on the camera from across the room through my amp, I'm going to start trying to give you guys some better audio quality. And so I'm hoping to slowly improve the quality of the videos and I'm trying not to do too many videos until I do that because A, I don't want you to have to keep suffering through this weirdness that you're dealing with, dealing with right now and just uh you know I'm, I'm looking forward to having better sounding videos soon hopefully uh camera work is going to continue to suck but hey you know no one's making you subscribe i didn't even ask all those other people ask you to like and subscribe i'm not going to ask you to smash nothing just if you want to keep watching keep watching that's awesome but uh i'm going to keep doing things real casual like and real sloppy and hopefully just the audio is going to get better here soon though Stay tuned. This thing is going to be fun to talk about. All right. Thanks for listening to me. Go out there, buy yourself something cool on Craigslist. Don't rip anybody off and uh, try not to get ripped off yourself. All right. Have a good one, guys.